Hey folks, it's been a while. But after a crappy year, I'm back and doing some more cool time videos. Um, obviously, using Gloss and Glint still, which is cool because it's probably the best stuff out there for making large pipe flies. Um, today, I'm gonna I'm gonna show how to make a, a, a six or seven inch fly. Um, you can use whatever colours you want, head over to the Deer Creek site and have a look at the Gloss and Glint colour range and pick what you like. Um, your only limits are your own imagination. So what I'm going to do is get some materials out first. And you just got to love this stuff, you just got to love it. Just nice and shiny and we all love shiny stuff. I'm going to mix this fly up a bit slightly by using um, synthetics over some natural materials as well. And it's kind of strange because people say, no, you can't do that. You, why, why can't you do it? <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> um, we're at Sterling Anglin Show um, a wee while ago there doing some demos and people were actually quite amazed that I was using like peacock kale and stuff. Uh, it's like nothing's stopping you doing it. <laughs> the fish don't care if the fly looks good. That's what counts. Okay, so I'm using uh, Glisten Glen Plus. I'm going to be using a uh, peacock kelp. Um, I'm going to be using some jungle cock. This has been dyed by uh, Chris Raw Custom Flies down in Wales, and it's pretty much the best I've ever seen this stuff. Um, I'll put a link to. Um, to Chris's site at the end of the video in the comments box if you want to go and check him out or buy some but it's great stuff but he only does limited amounts so if he's doing some grab it okay going to start just uh, the usual we've just put a clear mono thread down hook and I'm going to use pretty much a basic generic glue because I've run out of crop glue so sitting around there Okay, I'm going to take the smallest amount of G and G. Can you see that? That's just hardly, hardly anything at all. Okay, and we're just going to tease that out to give it a nice tapered look at the end. Okay, so we're just going to lay that on like so. And whip right up to around there. You got that? Okay. This is a really quick and simple fly to make, um, and they look great in the water. Okay. So now what we're going to do? We're going to put a, another piece. And again, I'm only using literally pencil lead thick sections of this stuff because. The less you use, the better it is in the water. Um, and it's hard to show you this unless I actually go out and do a video um, of a fly swimming about, which I may actually do. Um, but this stuff is pretty amazing in the water. Um, so we're going to lay that on, and we're going to lay that on just slightly shorter than the last piece, and that will give you that tapered edge. Okay. And a couple of wraps around like so. Now we're just going to split that, you can see that, we're just going to split that and we're just going to pull it down a little bit on each side of the hook, like so. Now here's a here's a little tip, I love to add extra flash and stuff, um, I think it's sometimes quite beneficial, you get a nice little bit of a, an extra trigger point in there, so I just use some, some angel hair, like so, and you just pull a length out. And what I'll do is I'll just lie that in on the top and go around a couple, like so. So, and that's pretty much all we're using for that colour. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and use a darker, a darker green. Again, colour-wise you know you've all got your favorite colors out there so this is just pretty much a generic way of showing you how to tie with gliss and glint so if you've got your own favorite colors just use your own favorite colors 
if not go and check out the, the range Deer Creek has. Okay so that's going on and again we're teasing that out like so. A couple of wraps around and as we're wrapping it around we're going to bring it slightly more forward towards the eye of the hook. This would give us a nice small nose to finish off with and again if I'm apologising if I'm sniffing but I seem to have picked up a, a bit of a cold from somewhere but I think that's typical. Okay so again we're going to tease that out a little bit. Okay and that goes on and you can see the taper on that. The, the taper's come along quite nicely on that. Okay and round. So okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to take half of that top piece and fold that back and give it a couple of wraps around to secure it and then we're going to go underneath and we're pretty much going to do the same thing. We're going to take half of that and divide it on each side of the hook and tease it back like so. And it's a bit messy there. And a couple of wraps around. You don't want to build that up too much because we're trying to get a nice small nose at the at the end there. Um, and then also give something nice for your eyes to latch onto as well, just there. Okay, so we're coming up to the pretty much the end. So I'm going to bring that all the way forward and fold that back like so. Check that's looking good. Okay. And again, just tease it back, tease it back. If you pull and twist a little bit, it will actually straighten that out somewhat if it's a wee bit crinkly. So I'll do a tip for you. Okay. And we're going to go a wrap or two around there. Okay. And then finally, we're going to fold that under. Okay, and a few wraps around there just to secure. Okay, now what I usually do here, we have a couple of loose bits, so I usually take a lighter and just touch like that, and that just burns them away, but only just touch it or she'll melt your thread. Okay, so that's nice and neat and flash on top, sitting there quite nice. If you're quite happy with that, the next thing you need to do now is you need to go for your jungle cock okay if you haven't got jungle cock don't worry about it too much okay so we'll pick a couple of feathers and what i'm going to do i guess the trout fishers will, may think this is pretty sacrilege doing this but i'm going to cut them about there not know much about trout flies okay so i'm now going to lay one on there and a few wraps around to secure. I'll show you this one's done and take another one. That's a tricky bit. And lay that on. And a few wraps around to secure. Like so. Okay. I'm happy with that positioning so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go for a couple of pieces of peacock curl. I got this from um, Rich Anthony, one of the pro team guys, um, the last fair we done. I don't know if he sells it, no idea. Um, <laughs> if you can track him down you can ask him. Um, so The reason I use peacock curl, I think it makes a nice contrast on the back of the fly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of line the stems up there, like so, and then I'm just going to chop those ends off, and then I'm going to put that on, like so, a few wraps around. You can put as much of this on as you like, um, pretty much until you're, you're happy with your, with your end result. Okay, I'm going to go a couple of wraps. Like so. 
OK. Now when that's wet, that will actually sit flush to that on the back of the fly. So let's get that tied off. I think with this colour, um, this is one of those flies that you could pretty much use anywhere. I think salt water, fresh water, pike, musky, whatever. Um, I think it will catch fish wherever you go. Okay, so we have the basic outline there. Now what we're going to do, we're going to give this a zap. Um, diamond vine, UV, not too thick. So what I'm going to do is I just, a lot of the trout guys put this on and then they spread it around with a, with a bobbin. Um, obviously with doing pike and predator flies you don't need really that finesse. So I just put a little bit on and just spread it around like this. And this will actually make this pretty much bomb proof. And that, when you UV it, ain't going anywhere. I'll give you a wee tip as well. If you um, if you use this and you, and you go like that and you think, oh, that's still a wee bit tacky. What's going on with that? Just check with your batteries because obviously um, if your batteries start to wear down, then it's not going to, it's not going to cure it properly. You always need good, good batteries in these torches. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm going to do now is stick the the eyes on. Um, I just love. There's no, in my opinion, there's nobody better at doing eyes than Deer Creek. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that copy them. There's a lot of people that maybe steal ideas, but to me, Deer Creek eyes have always been innovators and the leaders in 3D eye and drop poxy resin 3D eyes um, that's why I continue to, to use them and why I continue to to push them so I'm just putting out a bit of a bit of glue this is I, I say I usually use crock 